Empire. We're talking the key to the 49ers win and their dominant defense. It's another episode of the Football Jones Podcast. What's up, everybody? Here we are in San Francisco right after the 49ers have beaten the Green Bay Packers and handily to make a big statement and improve to 10-1 and and remain atop the standings of the NFC. I didn't see this coming. I felt like they would win. Did not think that it was going to be as lopsided as an affair as we saw. But it's clear that the 49ers should be taken seriously and deserve to be in the conversation of Super Bowl contenders. As I was in the locker room today and I was talking to guys, they felt like every time they win a game, there's always a but that critics are always saying, but they haven't played this team, but they haven't beat anybody, but this, but that. And so they felt like this is a game that enabled them to kind of quiet some of those critics. Now, we're going to talk to Jimmy Ward, a safety who's been here for the last six years, who's seen the lean years, and now he's seen this construction project take place over the last three years, and now they're primed for success. He's going to give some insight onto just the mindset inside this locker room. So we're going to hear from Jimmy Ward, then I'll come back with some observations about that game, and the playoff picture that's starting to take shape. Here we go, Jimmy Ward. What does a game like this mean to you guys? I know it's just one game, you don't want to get ahead of yourself, but this is a big big game. Uh, it's a big game uh, because it's the next game, and then I know we we we'll probably end up seeing them some some time down down the line uh, right. playoffs, uh, and then just to be able to beat a, a, a good team, you know, uh, and hopefully that silence the critics, but it, that'll never silence the critics. So we got to beat another good team this this week coming up. Right. So, but it was just to get that win and just to have a right now we we have ten wins right now, so that's great. Is it crazy? You know, you guys came in this game with nine wins and you still had questions. You know. And you talk about the critics do you does that surprise you at all that that they continued to doubt you guys no they're gonna doubt us again next week uh mm-hmm. you know that's all part of the game you know people get paid to uh criticize other people so right. you know they're not gonna stop you know you want you want some views you need somebody to watch you <laughs> <laughs> How did this defense come together like it is, just this dominant level, the way you guys are this year? Man, years of building. Uh, when John and Kyle Shanahan end up, you know, adding some right pieces, going to get some guys in free agents and drafting some guys, but it took some years, man. Uh, I've been through the storm. Uh, I broke my bones for this defense when the defense wasn't wasn't so great. But uh, it's it's all coming together now. So does that make it that much more special? What does it mean to you? you know, oh, it means, being what you dealt with and everything and then to come back, be healthy, and and your whole team's playing like this. Man, it means everything to me right now. You know, I, I haven't had a win a season. I, I haven't I haven't went to the playoffs. So, you know, at the same time, you know, I'm excited, but I'm just I'm, I'm humble and I'm always composed. So I don't really try to – I don't really get out of character too much. Uh, if somebody makes me get out of character on the field or off the field, then, hey, hats off to them. But I'm more of a calm, uh, cool, and collective type of guy. When was it in this game right here that you felt like, you know what, we're in for a big game? <laughs> uh, from the first play to the end. Like, I, I, you know, like any quarterback, you know, I've I seen Aaron Rodgers come back and win the game right. down by 10, 15, 20 points. So, you know, you can't take him for uh, you can't take him for no regret. So what what was it that worked so well? Because they could never get comfortable. Uh, just rushing cover, man. Mm-hmm. Just uh, guys flying around, making tackles, making open field tackles. That kind of kills the other team when you see the defense feeding off each other, all the energy that we're playing with, the crowd, and it's a away game for them. I mean, Jen, just People just us are, going out there and just fast 11. Like all, I, I call it fast 11 when I say the defense, the full 11, get to the ball. Uh-huh. So, you know, like you said, there's more challenges, more tests coming up. Um, but what's going to be the key for you guys to continue? Because everybody's going to give you their best shot. You know? Oh, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that means there's going to be some more good ball games. Oh, that's cool, man. Uh, 
Uh, oh, we're just going to really, it's just we trying to get better. I don't know what other teams are going to do, but they're going to get our best shot. So it's going to be exciting. A, real quick, last one. When you guys come in at halftime with that lead like that, what was the move? What were you guys saying to each other? Uh, don't take the foot off your brakes. <laughs> That's a good football team that we're playing against right now, and I'm pretty sure uh, they're not happy about this loss. And we knew in halftime, like they was gonna come, they was gonna come and give it their all. Mm -hmm. But we end up, we didn't let the foot, we didn't let, uh, get our foot off the brakes. Good deal. All right, man. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. All right, and as you heard there from Jimmy Ward, these guys have a lot of confidence. You know, as he said, maybe this will quiet the critics, but really, they never will. And I think that that's a point of motivation for them. Um, they know, as Richard Sherman said at the podium a little later, they know what they've got in this locker room. They don't care what anybody else has to say, and they know that nothing will ever be good enough uh, for, for some critics unless they win a Super Bowl. And they're taking that as motivation and we're going to see how this thing plays out because they've got a tough game coming up in Baltimore against Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. I'll be at that game. And um, I think for them, it's very realistic to expect that they could go on a deep playoff run. It'll be interesting to see who they would match up with in the playoffs or if they get there in the NFC Championship games. But the NFC playoff picture has definitely taken shape. So you've got the 49ers as would be the one seed for the playoff start today. Then the Saints, who are 9-2, and two, and they had to squeak past the Panthers. I, I felt like they, they were among the elite in that conference, but they've really kind of wobbled a little bit here and there. Um, had some close calls, games that they should be winning, you would thought, handily, based on how they played early in the season, but they don't quite look as imposing. So you kind of got to wonder about them. Then you got the Packers, who, despite that loss, they're still a good team. I think when they ran into the 49ers, Matt LaFleur going up against Kyle Shanahan, longtime friends, former co-workers with Houston Texans and the Redskins and the Falcons, it almost had that feel of you're playing your big brother in basketball, and he knows all your moves because he taught them to you, and he knows how to stop them, and you can't quite figure out how to beat them. That's how that felt. So... I think the, 40, the the Packers are still a good team. They've got to do some self-evaluation. they got to figure out how to, how to be able to better respond to the pressure that the defense was showing them. I mean, Aaron Rodgers even said that he was confused by some of the stuff. And he's a future Hall of Famer. He's played in this league a long time. You wouldn't think he'd be confused by the defense was what they were throwing at him. But that was the case. So we'll see what happens with them. But I think they make it to, you know, they win their division. They make it to the playoffs. Cowboys. Because the NFC East is so bad, they're going to win that thing. But we saw Jason Garrett just make some boneheaded decisions. I understand he wanted to take the points and then try to put it on his defense to get a stop and get the ball back. But that backfired on him. And Jerry Jones came down very critically on coaching after that game. So we already know Jason Garrett's not long for this world as a Cowboys coach. But we'll see if they're one and done when they get to the playoffs or what. Seattle Seahawks are a wild card team, but I mean, they would be able to beat the Cowboys, I would think. They would be able to beat a lot of teams. And the other wild card team for now would be the Minnesota Vikings. They're another team that you really don't want to play because they're playing hot. They're hot right now. So it's very going to be an intriguing playoff picture there with the NFC. It's also going to be interesting to see how things shake out. If there's anybody who can force their way into this thing, I don't know. Right now, I mean, the Rams aren't dead. Um, the Eagles are hanging by a thread because of that Cowboys loss. But I don't know if I can see anybody really forcing their way into this eight. When you look over at the AFC, the Patriots obviously 10-1. and one, They're number one. Ravens, 8-2. and two. They've got the Monday night game against the Rams. That'll be another good test for them. Then the Texans, 7-4. and four. The Chiefs, 7-4 and four, on a bye. The Bills, uh, who I just can't really take seriously because Josh Allen, that, that offense, just don't come correct. They need to do a better job of supporting their defense. I, I just I just don't feel like the Bills will, will do anything in the playoffs. And then the Steelers would be the last wild card team right now. Questions about them too, obviously. 
things could shake out a little differently more in the AFC than they could the NFC, I think. But we're going to see how this goes. Again, Monday night game will be big for the Ravens. If they get another win, then next week they would be at home facing the 49ers. All of the picture is going to start coming into place. And then, at the same time, the draft picture is going to come into place. And we know it looks like the Cincinnati Bengals are going to be the the number one, have the number one pick because they are just woefully bad. We thought the Dolphins would be the 0-16 candidate, but turns out that the Bengals are even worse. Then it'll be the Redskins got to win. The Dolphins, they could be two. Redskins, you know, I don't know how many more wins they're going to get the rest of the year. It's going to be interesting to see. That's all for this week. Hope you guys have a great day, great week, Thanksgiving week. It'll be some good games on tap. We'll see how that all shakes out, and I'll talk to you next week. Again, you can read me at usatoday.com. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at by Mike Jones. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line by email at mjones at usatoday.com. Thanks, and have a great day.